complex context is here. Now, is it truly changing the game? Let's find out. As always, everything you need will be linked in the description below, including this page, the technical report, and even the quick start guide that I'm going to provide for you today. This is a pretty big step in image modeling because this is a multimodal model similar to what GPT-40 can do. And some of the highlights here are things like one-shot character consistency and even multiple characters, which I'm going to show you later, which is really impressive. Iterative editing, where you can target certain aspects of the image and make those changes. Style reference, for those of you that are familiar with like IP adapter, very similar to that. Let's take a quick look at the models available. There are the Flux Context Pro models. That's what we're going to be looking at today. I have access through OpenArt because I've been working with them. Also, Max, which is it's still experimental, but it's said to be a little bit better than the Pro version. If you really want to try it now, they are available at uh, the following places here. And here, finally, we get to the dev model, which is currently in private beta. So I would say roughly, don't take my word for it, maybe a couple weeks, might be a few more weeks. Let's see. But basically, it's a 12B diffusion transformer model, which is sort of in line with a lot of the recent models that have been coming out. But there's no word of an official release date, so that's still to be determined. And I will have to state that because I do work with open arts, everything that I say today is my own opinion and doesn't reflect theirs. Now, with that being said, I'm going to go into the create image area here. I'm going to show you some examples of just text to image, which it does really well. So it's like an update to the pro model. Here's an image that I purposely took to look analog photorealistic. Some dude in the rain here looks very natural. Some miniature construction workers working on a broken camera. Badass orcs, anyone? And as I show you more images on the screen, obviously it has greater prompt adherence. I believe this one you can prompt up to 500 tokens. And it has the same great quality as the previous Flux models do. But one of the biggest advantages is that it recognizes artistic styles a lot more than previous Flux versions. Here are some alcohol ink splash art images that I like to create quite often and it truly honors that really grungy messy look this model has sort of a grit to it and it really makes this style come to life here's one image that i really liked that really shows the artistic style I actually used this for the open art demo video so basically you can prompt for the art style and it should recognize most popular ones. I haven't tested it in depth, but at least for something like this, for oil painting, you can see the brush strokes, the detail. It truly honors that oil painting style. Now, what really makes this model truly shine, as I said earlier, it's multimodal. So you can do iterative editing on the fly. Instead of going into this interface on OpenArt, I'm going to use what's called Chat to Edit, which is located here on the left if you happen to be an OpenArt user. And what I'm going to do is import an image here. And I'm going to start with something super simple. Let's do something like the man walks with his girlfriend. Now, if you're using this through API, it's actually really quick. As I was saying that, you see it's added the girlfriend and they're holding hands. The hands probably could use some work, but you get my point. That's basically how this works. Basic modifications like turn a car blue, change the person's hair to red, that's all easy. But where this model really shines is that you can really control things like composition. You can even instruct it to keep the background details the same, but change the person. So simple changes like that with simple modifications. But what's really impressive, the fact that it can do character consistency with one image and as well as multiple character consistencies. So let's start with this guy again. And what we're going to do is iterate throughout the process. Let's change the scenery. So in the prompt here, I'm writing the man with the jean jacket because I'm identifying something specific about that man so that we're referencing who that person is. But at the front of the prompt, I'm going to change the scenery there. I like to use change setting. You can use change environment, location, whatever. 
So I simply put change setting to the park. The man with the jean jacket sits on a park bench. Let's have him do an action. Let's say reading a book. Now let's see if it keeps the consistency with a simple prompt. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. So I would say for the most part, it honors the character and even the composition changes. And I would say that's quite successful. Let's continue with this image. And maybe now he wants to go for a coffee. So we're gonna do the same thing. Change setting to a cafe. The man with the jean jacket is drinking coffee. So here we see the model's a little confused. He's drinking the coffee, he's outside of the cafe, but he's still sitting on a park bench. Full transparency, it's not gonna be one shot editing all the time. This is where you know, okay, I need to be more specific. There's two things I wanna bring up. We can use the second image as a reference image. I would actually go back to the initial reference image and start there. We'll just copy and paste the same prompt and let's adjust the prompt to be more specific. So now I've added the man with the jean jacket is sitting on a table by the window in a cafe drinking coffee. One other tip to maintain the character consistency throughout, which is good practice to do, is to add a similar phrase as this. Maintain his exact facial features and clothing. When you're going after consistency, you always want to state for it not to change. I'm going to go ahead and generate this, but while this generates, so in a sense, you can do negative prompting within the positive prompt. With context, there's no positive or negative. You really just have to state what you want. So we see here we have a better result. However, there's an extra coffee cup. And this is one of those things where you just have to regenerate or even you can put in the prompt drinking a single coffee cup. And those of you that know me by now, I always say when it comes to prompting, context is everything. And pun intended with this model, context is everything. So now that I've said a single coffee cup, we just have that. The hand is deformed, but again, we can fix it. So don't dwell on that. Now, another way we can edit is if we want to change the style of the initial image. So let's do restyle to 2D PlayStation video game. So you see here, he's got a bit of pixelation to him. He's got that 2D vibe, but it still honors the original image. Like if you even look at the lamps and the signs, it does mimic what's behind there. So it works pretty well. Now at this point, we can further edit in this style, we'll put him driving a car in the city. Now I want to come back to this image and just show you quickly that the same thing works for multiple characters. Now obviously if you had a better starting image than mine that would be best but I'm just going to use this as an example. The goal here is to keep the clothing the same way and let's just change the setting for now. So in the prompt, I'm going to put change the setting to Paris. And now I'm pinpointing who the people are by stating certain things about them. So the man in the jean jacket and the woman with the gray sweater. And then I put our posing in front of the Eiffel Tower. So now I'm also stating the change in location and being very specific where in Paris. And then finally, just to further reiterate, I don't want any changes to them. Maintain their exact facial features and clothing. Generally, those are the steps to this iterative editing process. If you're changing the setting, be as specific as possible. If you want to maintain consistency, you're going to use maintain their features and their clothing. In this case, I didn't state to change the pose or anything like that. But as you can see, we have the same characters, different location. What we can do is take the same prompt and instead of posing in front of the Eiffel Tower, we can put something like taking a selfie. And you see just with that simple change, now the composition has changed, their pose has changed. And according to Black Forest Labs, you can do this to about six times before you start to see some image quality degradation. Some other cool things you can do is for, let's say, product placement. You've got a logo and you want to put it you know, on a t-shirt, a pop can, whatever the case may be. 
And in the prompt, I'm just simply going to put place this logo on a white t-shirt on the left chest area being very specific. And as a result, you'll see the logo on the t-shirt. Now I will call out that it's kind of big for the shirt. Currently, this is sort of a limitation for the model. And I suspect that when you'll be able to run it locally through something like ComfyUI, there'll be probably better control mechanisms to control the reference image. By default, there is sort of like a strength setting, but that affects the quality, not necessarily the size of the reference image. So just playing with the prompt a little bit and stating that it's a small logo did decrease the size a little bit, but I don't know if that that's further conditioning it or just luck at this point. And this is something that you're going to see with this model that even with people in certain compositions, it can seem like a stiff model where it struggles with certain things. But this time, let's try putting it on a soda bottle or pop bottle. Who says soda <laughs> nowadays? And then we'll put it has wavy designs and curves on the label. So this one didn't make a label. It made some cool design on the bottle. Here it did, but the logo is a little deformed. This one turned out a lot better. Let me show you the one I did for open art. And this one turned out great. See the open art logo here. Here's some other similar designs. But for the most part, in this case, it worked pretty well. We could even do something like this where you actually have a product. And I'll just do a simple prompt here. Place this pop can in a woman's hands who is drinking the can in the kitchen. This one turned out pretty good. And you see it keeps the text intact. And if there's a little bit of degradation, you can always do an upscale. But the one hilarious thing is you'll find with this, massive tall boys. <laughs> it has a tendency to make things bigger, like what we saw with the logo, right? But uh, man, this woman's thirsty. This is a big can of raspberry <laughs> lychee. This one's not too bad, but you see out of the four, two of them were massive. But the fingers look really great, even down to the thumb here. Really cool. I do want to touch again on style transfer here. If you look at this image, I'm going to prompt for, again, something super simple. Transfer this style onto a 1950s car. Those of you that are familiar with IP adapter, it works pretty much the same way. So we see the influence of that image transferring over to this 1950 style car, almost to the T, I would say, in terms of artistic style and texture even. One more thing on character consistency. If you look at this uh, character here, if I were to train a model, whether on open art or even locally, this type of pattern is hard to keep consistent throughout. But now with context, we could keep the exact likeness of this outfit as we iterate through. Let me show you. And in the prompts, we're going to change it to a nature landscape with mountains, cherry blossom trees, while maintaining her outfit, keeping the consistency. Now, as we take a look at the image, look at the little details of the outfit, the lines, the little accessories that she has. They're exactly as they are as in the initial image. And yes, we can change the pose and, you know, have her driving a motorcycle, a car, whatever the case may be. I tell you, this is truly groundbreaking for image models after we've had kind of a lull with image models. Yes, quality is getting better, but but having a model that can do control net like editing and you don't have to have all these different models or different workflows just to do various things. Now it's built into the model. So that's super exciting. Now I didn't really go in depth on Flux Context because I want to wait for the dev model. But if you want more of a comprehensive guide, I'm going to leave a link to the video I did for open art and I go much more in depth on the little details. That'll be really helpful for you to know when the dev model comes out. Make sure to check out these videos, but until that next video, I'll see you when I see you.